I'm Bassmaster Elite Series Pro Randall Tharp, and I'm out here on one of my favorite lakes, my favorite time of the year. And I don't think it's the time of year when you can catch the most fish, but you can sure catch some big fish, and I can catch them a way that I love to fish, which is with a big weight, a big rod, and big line. Um, as you can see, this is this is this is the deal right here. This is what I love. We got deep hydrilla. We got miles of it. And we're, we're in that late summer to early, early fall time. And that's my favorite time because that's when you have the most grass. You've got grass in all stages. It's been growing all summer long. It's, it's topped out everywhere. It's starting to hollow out in the center of these mats. But out here on the edges of these mats, you have some beautiful clumps. And so you've got a lot of scenarios right here. You've got, you've got an edge, you've got isolated clumps, and then you've got a hollow, hollow area. So one thing you're gonna hear me talk about is these edges, because bass like to use those edges as ambush points. So sometimes they like to be a little bit deeper on that outside edge. Sometimes they'll be right in these clumps in this area where I'm at now, and then sometimes they'll be right on that inside edge. But these clumps, form an outside edge and inside edge, and then you have this huge hollowed out area, which can be good at times too. So, uh, so like I said, we're not gonna probably get a lot of bites today, but we're out to catch some quality and get some quality bites. And uh, hopefully I can share with you guys a few tips and uh, a few of my little secrets and, and some of the, the finer points of the technique part of catching bass like that and we'll also get into a lot of the technical things so you can increase your percentages, you can become a much more efficient angler, and hopefully catch a few more big bass out of some really thick hydrilla. And for, for me, I mean, everybody has their techniques that, uh, that they love fishing. You know, I, I, I learned how to fish this way. I didn't really have anybody that, that gave me a lesson or taught me, but, uh, you know, I started fishing tournaments and started my career on the Tennessee River on, on Gunnersville. And, uh, you know, it's something that I, I spent weeks and weeks and years trying to perfect. And, uh, you know, as this equipment evolves, like every year we get better materials to build the rods out of and the reels and we get better line. You know, I still work very, very hard making sure that I have the very best equipment possible to put every, all the odds in my favor. So when I do get a bite in this heavy cover, I catch, catch the fish. But uh, the reason I like a long rod is because we're, we're sitting in 12 feet of water here. Um, I've got 10 feet of water under this mat. And what this long rod allows me to do, it allows, allows this bait to fall unobstructed. And I can follow that bait down. Like what I've got, what I like to call it is a controlled slack line. Like I don't like to hinder the fall of that bait, but I don't like to lose contact with it either. And, and another huge advantage to a longer rod, this is a 711, um, is that, that it allows me to have more leverage, especially on a long pitch like that right there. It allows me to have more leverage when, when that fish does bite to get that fish's head turned towards me and get him out of that cover and get him in the boat. And, and the reel is so, so important too. And the biggest thing is the drag. And I don't want my drag to slip. I don't want it to slip at all. I've got these drag, this is a Team Lose Custom Pro and a 7.5 to one gear ratio. And I've got it cinched down as tight as it'll go. And it's not gonna slip. Uh, I don't like a real high speed reel. You know, this reel's available in like an eight, three to one, but I don't like it for this particular situation because I feel like it doesn't quite have the power to winch that fish out like this 7.5 does. Um, but still, the 7.5 is fast enough in between pitches. It allows me to get that bait back to my body, just like it's a really long pitch right there. I can get that bait in really quick and make the next, pit, next pitch. So there's a balance there. You know, obviously, if I went with a slower retrieve reel, it would have even more power, but then it wouldn't be as efficient. Then I feel like I, I, would, I would be working a lot harder to get the bait in for fewer casts. You know, another question I get asked all the time when I'm doing seminars or something is, do you think that braid matters? Do you think that line size matters? And, uh, you know, especially people up north, their water tends to be a little clear and they are scared to death 
that a bass isn't gonna bite because they're using 50 or 65 pound braid. Well, I'm here to tell you from my experience, I don't think they see the line. I, I, th I think if you present that bait properly and I don't care how clear the water is when you're fishing vegetation like this, you know, I, I just don't think it matters. And I, I will give you one piece of advice. Never go to a gunfight with a knife. Always have your tackle match to, to be able to handle the biggest fish in the lake. Because I believe, without a shadow of a doubt, the biggest fish in the lake like to be in, around, or near the heaviest cover available to them. And that's why I love fishing this matted vegetation. When I'm fishing deep grass like this, you know, it's, it's a fine line. You know, you gotta, you, you're gonna hear me say efficient. I want it to be efficient. I don't want that bait to land on top of the mat and me have to shake it every time for it to go through. If I'm finding that's the case, then just go up in size. Like if I'm using a one ounce and I'm having to shake it, I'll go to one ounce and a quarter. And that's why it's extremely important, you know, to have a compact bait. You don't want to bait with a lot of appendages when you're fishing really thick cover like this because it's going to tend to hang up more. You know, rain sinkers are, are very dense tungsten, so they're a little bit smaller. That makes them go through a little cleaner. Um, you know, and a compact bait like a Zoom Z Hog or a Zoom Z Crawl, I mean, it fits a four, four aught straight shank hook very well, uh, and it and it penetrates that cover and. and and like I said, that's why they make sinkers from, you know, a 16th ounce all the way up to two and a half ounces. I will caution you though. I feel like the bigger the weight you use, the lower your percentages go as far as landing fish. But I would much rather be efficient and take that chance of losing a fish. I mean, I'd rather get the bite than not get the bite. So, uh, so but I would, I would try to use the lightest weight possible, but still be efficient. And uh, remember, do not, do not sit there every time and shake that bait trying to get it to go through. Just sit down, retie, put you a little bigger weight on. And uh, you know, if you're lucky like me, you can have two or three rigged up. And therefore, if the wind's blowing really hard, you may wanna move up in size. You know, if it's a real calm day and you're able to penetrate with a one ounce, then, then scale down to a one ounce. And then, then, then you'll definitely land more fish when you finally get them to bite. Another key thing, when you're fishing like this. You know, sometimes I'll go an hour, two hours. Sometimes, you know, I'll go four hours without a bite and I'll catch my entire stringer in an hour. Don't get excited when you get a bite. I see a lot of guys, the first thing they do, they go an hour without a bite and one knock slack in the line, the first thing they do is drop their rod tip and get slack in that line. That's definitely not what you want, especially with braid. You know, if, if it, I fish without a hook a lot in practice. And I will tell you that a bass that really wants that bait is not gonna turn it loose. Um, you know, it'll hold on for a long period of time. And what I like to do, and every bite's different, you know, I, I'm not gonna say you should wait two seconds all the time. You know, um, you know, if it's a very aggressive bite and you're sure that fish has got it, reel down, take every bit of slack out of that line, and then jack him. You know, you don't want to drop that rod tip and create slack. I, I just, I see it time and time again. And with braided line fishing this way with a big, big weight, you, if you get slack in that line and that fish's bite, you're just creating an opportunity for him to get off. Because a lot of times, even a big fish, when you set the hook and you get slack in your line and say you even hook him good, then, then what you end up doing is, is you jerk the fish towards you. You create slack in your line. You usually rip a hole in their mouth and all that does is cre create a greater chance of that fish getting off. So when you do get that bite, make sure he's got it. Let that fish kind of pull your rod tip down. And when you're sure he's got it, when he's pulling your rod tip down, then you come unglued on him. But never, ever, ever drop that rod tip and get slack in your line. You know, I get asked all the time, you know, when I do seminars on this, on fishing deep grass like this, like, where do you start? And if you look out here, I mean, this is a giant grass bed. I mean, there's just as much of the water in this particular lake covered up with matted hydrilla as there is open water. So where do you start on that? My suggestion is, is start on a, start on an edge. Uh, you know, whether it's, it's an outside edge, which is what we have here. We got an outside edge, we've got scattered clumps, and then we've got an inside edge. 
bass always like to use that edge. It makes a very easy feeding opportunity for them. So whether it's the inside edge or outside edge, like right here where my boat's positioned, I can actually fish the outside, the, the, the middle, which, which is these isolated clumps right in here, and then we got the inside edge. Now this looks like a solid mat across here, but basically what we have is we have a bunch of hydrilla clumps, and then we've got an area in the middle where it's starting to hollow out. So what I'm talking about is the inside edge is not something you can actually see, but once you get really good, you can almost feel it. Because when, when you pitch over there like I just did, and it looks like a really thick solid mat, you can tell that it's a hollowed out area because my bait's not hitting anything on the way down. I'm letting that bait fall on that controlled slack line, so I'm very in touch with it. And you know, if, if, if it was a real thick area right in there, I would be able to feel that bait hitting stuff and it would probably get hung up maybe halfway down. But that bait is falling, you know, nonstop. It's, it's a clean fall, which is what I like. And that tells me, you know, bait fish and all the other fish that these bass are feeding on are traveling these edges. They're traveling around these open areas and these clumps. So while it may look like a vast mat of hydrilla, I'm fishing an edge. And, and like right here where I'm pitching, I'm fishing an inside edge. It's a perfect, perfect ambush point for a big bass. When you're over in these things needling around too, you know, it's very hard to stay quiet. Boat position, boat control is always a key in any kind of fishing, but just don't go churning up through here. I mean, you're gonna have to get your trolling motor, you know, relatively high to move a big 21 foot bass boat in this stuff but I find it's important to, to have it on as low a speed as you can, hit it on a constant speed. When you, when you have an area you're fixing a target, hit your trolling motor way back there. I'm, like I've got the wind on my back, so I'm using the wind as my friend here. The wind's helping push the boat. I'll get the boat moving and then I'll let off and I'll let that boat drift into the spot. I think that's super, super important because if you just go churning up in there with that trolling motor on high and that trolling motor coming and they didn't get big because they're dumb, I mean, they're not going to bite or they're going to leave. So I uh, try to be as stealthy as possible. And, and part of that too is just being patient. You know, you, we've already, fishing this technique, you're not going to get a ton of bites. We're after big bites. So, so act like every cast you make, there's going to be a big fish there and just try to sneak up on them the best you can. It's really important too when you're out in the middle of these mats like this to pay attention. You know, some bluegill smacking, I can't tell you how many times I've seen just a bluegill move and that'll give a, a whole school of big bass away. I mean, something made that bluegill move. He's not gonna swim through the top of one of these mats just cause he thinks it's cool to jump out of there. He's jumping out of there for a reason, you know, or it might just be a little ripple or a hump come up in that mat. You know, it could be a carpet, it could be a lot of things, but it also could be the sign that you need to pinpoint that big school of fish that's swimming around out here under these mats. We are sitting right now in 16 feet of water and I'm still fishing an edge, but I'm fishing some clumps that are actually submerged. Like you, you, this grass is only visible with some good glasses and uh, some, of these, some of these are a foot under the surface. Some of them are five feet under the surface, but uh, we're still, we're fishing the outside edge. And while I'm in 16, 17 feet, these clumps are in about 15. And uh, out behind me is like 20, 22, 23 foot. So uh, still fishing an edge, but we're gonna key on some of these deep, deeper grass, deeper clumps. And when you're keying on that stuff, this is when that rate of fall is, is to me is way more important than when you're punching mats. You're, you're kind of handicapped a little bit when you're punching mats because you, you're, you have to be efficient and you have to have a bigger weight on to penetrate that canopy up top. But you're really able to dial in the rate of fall fishing deep grass better because it's not, not as thick. And uh, not always is the lightest weight possible the best scenario. Uh, this water's really clear. Sometimes a heavy weight that zooms by fish really quick gets way more bites than a lighter weight that they get a good look at. So uh, it's important to experiment with the rate of fall. And just to give you an example, I have three rods out. I've got a, a one ounce, I've got an ounce and a quarter, and I got an ounce and a half. And that way I can experiment with the rate of fall. 
I also, if I get to a place that's a little thicker, I have a rod right there handy that I can pick up and, and get that bait to, to penetrate that clump of grass or whatever, whatever the target is that I'm trying to fish. Again, that rod position and rod, rod tip upon entry of the bait is critical, especially, especially in this deep water. It's a lot harder thing to achieve the deeper you go. And if you'll notice, as I'm making each pitch, I'm drawing a lot of line off of that reel. And I do that by actually, my rod is pointed behind me a little bit, and I'm thumbing that spool, letting a lot of line get off of there, because I need 17 feet of line out. So I've got a, a seven foot 11 inch flipping stick. So they're seven foot 11. You double that and then I'm free spooling a little bit more off there and that's allowing me to get to that, that 16, 17 feet that I need to get that bait to fall just like that all the way to the bottom. Following it down, controlled slack. Another thing when you're fishing submerged grass that is a key, it's a huge key, is you want that bait to stop. You want that bait to be hitting that grass. That's the kind of thing, just like a square bill crankbait deflecting off a rock, that's the kind of thing that you want that bait, you want it making little dust clouds and, 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 and making those vibrations as it's hitting that grass on the way down. That's what will that's trigger a bite a lot of times. I can't tell you how many times I feel that bait hit a piece of grass and stop and then penetrate and then that's right when you get your bite. And pay attention to every bite, especially when you're fishing deep like this, it's important to figure out the depth they're at and it can change in the course of a day. You know, sometimes in the early morning they'll be close to the top. You know, they may only be five or six feet down. And then later in the day, the sun gets really high. A lot of times they'll move down there to the bottom in the darkest, you know, coolest spot and hang out. So uh, it, it can change, but keying on those little things makes a huge difference, you know, when you're, when you're going to fish deep grass like this all day. It's important just to stay focused, you know, every cast, follow that bait down. And sometimes the bites are, are for, I mean, there's no doubt sometimes when you get a bite and sometimes you know, I don't know if it's the amount of grass between you and the fish. Sometimes they're hard to feel if one's on there. Uh, another, another good tip I'll tell you is, is when that bait gets to the bottom and you're fishing like this, or you think it's on the bottom, a lot of times it could be in a fish's mouth. That first part where you pull up on that bait and feel it, be real, real sensitive. You don't want to jerk it out of his mouth if one does have it. I can't tell you how many times I've never felt a bite and I just put a little pressure on that particular on that bait and you'll feel something funny and when you feel something funny just ease down on that fish if you feel that little bit extra weight on there let him have it mm. That's how we do it, flipping deep grass. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed being in my boat today on Lake Seminole. I had a blast, caught a few fish, and I hope you guys learned something. If you're interested in any of the products I used today, this is what I had in my hand. This is a 7-Eleven Arc Invoker Series Extra Heavy Action. I also use the Sniper Series in the same, same length and action today. Range punt shots, range just straight tungsten sinkers anywhere from one ounce all the way up to an ounce and a half. VMC heavy duty flipping hook on there. 
Team Lou's Custom Pro 7.5 to 1. That's it right there. If you're interested in any of this stuff, just click on the link below. In two days, it'll be sitting on your, your door from Tackle Warehouse.